Good morning on this first day of September 2022. I'm Linda Mori with Devotions for South Harbor Rick United, United Methodist Church. Well, the summer vacation times have come to a close and most, if not all, of our children are back in school. We have made sure that they had new clothes, new school supplies, checked out their new teachers and classrooms. We've prayed about them having a successful year and in general prepared them for 2020. 223 school year as much as we possibly can. Going to school has a purpose to teach children to learn, to help them grow in their knowledge. Something that as adults we should have in common with them because we all need to grow and learn. People seek knowledge because knowledge gives us a fundamental understanding of the world that allows us to steer a course around and through problems and obstacles. It gives us a far more honest and real sense of confidence and contentment. We've all heard the expression, ignorance is bliss. We all joke and laugh when we hear it because most of us realize that this is a sarcastic expression. In the book and movie, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, the ravenous bug blaster beast of Trial is a vicious wild animal from the planet Trial, known for its nerve-ending hunger and its mind-boggling stupidity. One of the main features of the beast is that if you can't see it, it assumes that it can't see you. Kind of like the ostrich with his head buried in the sand, a picture that we are all so familiar with. Due to this, this beast has been considered one of the least intelligent creatures in the universe. So, ignorance is bliss in the sense that one actually believes that the ravenous bug blaster beast will not eat us if we put a towel over our heads. This phrase, ignorance is bliss, is often used as a way of chiding someone for being willfully, stupidly, or na naively ignorant of the way of the world and how it actually works. <clears throat> Such that the person stumbles around in a thick cloud of false confidence and superficial contentment. The theologian John Piper writes, The well-educated person is the person who has the habits of mind and heart to go on learning what he needs to learn to live in a Christ-exalting way for the rest of his life. And that applies to whatever you do in your life. If we're going to apply God's work to the world, we need to know our world. Every chapter in a history book, every science experiment in a lab, and every interaction between classmates is an opportunity to learn about the, word, the world that God created, the place he especially put us to see him, enjoy him, and help others to do the same. Whatever Christians do with their lives, whether we eat or drink or run a company or teach second grade class or develop software or change diapers, we aim to do it to the glory of God. But this doesn't always happen. To grow in our knowledge requires careful thought and discernment. 1 Corinthians 10.31 tells us, So whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all for the glory of God. This includes going to school for our children and increasing our knowledge as adults. Truthclaims.webley.com says, Humans are naturally curious creatures. We believe that learning more will improve our lives and result in positive outcomes for us as individuals and for our society. The more we know about the world we live in, the more we can utilize our resources and enhance our lives. Humans often believe that knowledge is power and has the ability to empower us. Through knowledge, we are able to decide what is beneficial to us and what is harmful to us, and we are able to make rational decisions about the world around us. Scientific research is conducted to benefit our society and environment. As a community, scientific researchers must decide what questions are important and which are relevant. As humans, we seek knowledge to benefit ourselves as a species. As scientific researchers, knowledge is sought out to answer the questions that society has about the natural world. Ecclesiastes 7.12 says, For the protection of wisdom is like the protection of money, and the advantage of knowledge is that wisdom preserves the life of him who has it. 
Knowledge is important for personal growth and development. Knowledge solves problems, problems in life which can be solved with the power of knowledge. Knowledge sharpens our skills like reasoning and problem solving. A strong base of knowledge helps brains function more smoothly and efficiently. Psalm 119.66 says, Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I believe in your commandments. Because we are able to make abstract references to everyday experiences, communicate our ideas using letters and symbols, and have the capacity for self-realization and its ability to seek and attach meaning in our lives, we have an edge over many of the other animals on this planet. Many would say that humans seek knowledge for a very simple reason, because we are capable of doing so. There are countless verses in the Bible that tell us to continue our quest for knowledge, and we know that we will never be complete in knowledge until the day when our life here on earth is complete. One of my favorite verses to fall back on in the Bible, a study group, is 1 Corinthians 13, 2, where it states, For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I will know fully, just as I am fully known. So our learning continues even after we die. We remember that Solomon was the biblical king most famous for wisdom. In 1 Kings, he sacrificed to God, and God later appeared to him in a dream, asking what he wanted from him. Solomon asked for wisdom. Books 1 through 4 of Proverbs are all about gaining wisdom and all well worth the read. Chapter 1 begins, These are the Proverbs of King Solomon of Israel, the son of David. Proverbs will teach you wisdom and self-control and how to understand sayings with deep meanings. You will learn what is right and honest and fair. From these, an ordinary person can learn to be smart and young people can gain knowledge and good sense. If you are already wise, you will become even wiser. And if you are smart, you will learn to understand proverbs and sayings, as well as words of wisdom and all kinds of riddles. Respect and obey the Lord. This is the beginning of knowledge. Only a fool rejects wisdom and good advice. I'll read you just the subtitles of Proverbs chapters 2 to 4. Exhortations to embrace wisdom. Wisdom's rebuke. Moral benefits of wisdom. Wisdom bestows well-being, and get wisdom at any cost. And let's face it, who among us does not desire to be smarter? In the book of Exodus chapter 31, the Lord tells Moses that he has chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, the son of Ur, of the tribe of Judah, and that he has filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, and in all kinds of craftsmanship to make artistic designs in gold, silver, and bronze, to cut and set stones, to engage in all kinds of crafts. We can grow in our knowledge in a skill, just as we can grow in book knowledge. Each person can gain knowledge in their task for society. The Lord tells Jeremiah in chapter 315 of the same book, Then I will give you shepherds after my own heart, who will lead you with knowledge and understanding. Indeed, the Bible not only encourages us to seek out wisdom, but cautions us to guard against stupidity. 2 Timothy 2.23 says, Have nothing to do with foolish, ignorant controversies. You know that they will breed quarrels. In Psalm 92.6 says, The stupid man cannot know, the fool cannot understand. God in his love for us wants us to increase in our knowledge. In James 1.5 it says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given to him. Amen to that. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for a time of understanding and for the opportunity to learn new skills and stretch our understanding. We ask that you protect our children and guide them through this time of new classes, new teachers, and new opportunities. We ask that you give each of us a hunger for knowledge that we may grow in our understanding of the earth you have given us and of your ways and the world to come. We ask these things in Jesus' name. 
Amen. I hope that you have a glorious day. Bye-bye.